Hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be looking at scraping a Spotify, uh, a Shopify website using Python. I don't know why I said Spotify but oh well. So what we're going to be doing first of all is we're going to be opening up command prompt to make sure that we have all the required modules installed. So what we're going to need first off is we're going to need a module called pandas which is going to help us um, nicely take our data that we scrape from the website and then put it into a nice table and then save it to a CSV. So we're going to do pip install pandas. Once you're done with that, you want to do pip install requests. Request is going to let us make get requests and grab data from the sites we want to scrape. And then lastly, you want to do pip install BS4. BS4 just stands for beautiful soup 4 and it basically lets you convert a uh, code from a website as which is which comes in as a string into valid HTML that can be served through. So once you've got the three packages installed, which are beautiful soup 4 requests and pandas, we are good to start coding. So the website we're going to be scraping today is one of the top 10 websites that shows up on Spotify as the sort of inspiring list and since most uh, websites creating created on Shopify not Spotify are e-commerce based we what we're going to be doing is we're going to be scraping the items from the websites and their prices and then saving it as a CSV file so to begin with what I'm going to do is grab the URL right here which is to a website that was created in Shopify called Partake Foods and I've got it open right here already but I'm going to reload it and what you'll notice is the website has a nice little layout and it's about cookies and stuff. So what we essentially want to do is go onto the page that has all the items we want to scrape. And I've done some research beforehand and find out that this is the URL and this is the page that has all the items that they sell. Now, what we want to do in here is essentially scrape the title of the item and scrape the price of the item. And then essentially later on, once we've downloaded all that data or scraped all that data, we want to basically save that to a CSV. Now, the most important thing right here to do is understand how the website was created or what the layout of the website is. So for that, we're going to use the developer tools or the inspect. So what you want to do is you want to basically select um, one of, oops, you want to basically select just one of these little items because those are the items we want to scrape. This this whole thing sort of is the is the container that we want to scrape, and inside that is the title and the price. So we only want to keep that data. So I'm going to click on inspect right here, and then what you notice is when you hover on the different elements, it will show you what what you're hovering over on the screen as well. So we want to look for the entire sort of uh, div. Div is a container, um, but that's what they call it in HTML. It's a div. And essentially, we want to look for what the class of that div is. So class is like a reference or like giving giving a div a variable name, sort of like that, like a reference. So we only want to grab divs that have the class col, col, sm6, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to copy this right here, the class name that, way, that I have. And I'm, I'm going to do a control F to actually look for all the divs on the page with that class name. Now, if I run this, we'll notice that it hovers over essentially all the items that we want to scrape on this website. So that's the that's the div that we want to scrape because it's basically it basically covers all the items on the page. All the divs um, essentially share the same class name. So we want to scrape that div, um, which is why what we're going to do is copy this link to the or, the or the class name right here but before we copy that what what you want to do is we want to actually grab the code and make a get request to this website to grab the html code of it so we're going to uh, copy the url partakefoods.com collections all go on to our jupyter notebook and then first off we're going to do all our imports so we're going to do import pandas as pd I'm going to do import requests as R, oops, and then we're going to do import, um, actually, we're going to do from BS4, which is beautiful soup 4, import beautiful soup with capital B and a capital S. 
Now that we're done with the imports, what we're going to do is create a new variable called request, well, we're going to call it request1, and that's going to be equal to r, which stands for the request uh, module that we just imported. And we're going to use the dot get method to basically get the HTML code as a string um, format from the website partakefoods.com collections all, because that will return the web page uh, code for this page right here, which has all the items and prices we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And if I uh, print my variable request one, what we'll notice is it says response 200, which means response OK. So the website returned the data we wanted to in the get request that we made. Perfect. So if I do request one dot text, we'll also be able to see all the all the HTML code for the website we just got um, in a text slash string format. So if I run that, you will see a bunch of gibberish, but it's because it's in a string format. Um, but you see things like follow Partake Foods on Pinterest. So it's actually the content from this web page right here because we did a get request for that URL. Now we can't really physically go ahead and look for the prices and the um, title for each product individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to use beautiful soup to convert this text into a navigatable sort of um, HTML code that we can navigate through and find specific tags with specific um, class names or, or IDs. So to do that, we're going to create a new variable called soup and then we're going to equals that to beautiful soup, which is the um, class we imported. And then we are going to pass in the um, request, which has all the code that we need as a string format. So request one dot text and then comma html.parser is the parser we're going to use to basically convert this string into navigatable sort of html. Now if we run this, this soup variable right here will allow us now to use methods such as find and find all. So find all and find basically let us find um, elements within the html code based on the type of tag they are and the class name if you will. So Let's go ahead and look for the class name and the tag that we're actually looking for. So first off, what we want to do is we know that the tag we're looking for is div because the div contains all the information that we need. And we also know what the class name for that div is because it's shared by all those divs. So we're going to copy the class name and we're going to remember. Oh, um, just let's just see again. Just copy this class name right here. And we're going to remember that it's a tag type div. Okay, so let's go back to our code and we're going to do soup.find. We're going to do find all because we want to find all the divs on the page with that class name, not just one because find just returns the first item on that page with that with that tag and that class name. But we want to actually find all. So we're going to do div because we want to find all the divs on that page with the class name. So class underscore equals to and you want to paste the class name you copied. Now by default, it comes in with the space for some reason. So you want to get rid of that. And then what you're going to notice now is if I run this right now, it basically returns a list of all the, oops, a list of all the divs that we have extracted from our web page. So the first div, for example, it seems kind of cut off. Maybe it's because I'm printing a lot of stuff at the same time. So let's just assign this to a variable, which we're going to be calling products. So since it's a list of all the divs that contain the product information, let's call this product. Run this again. Well, of course, we won't see anything because we're not printing. Now, if I do products, since it's a list, we can use the um, reference or the index to only print the first item. So let's only print the first item from the products list. And that will be the first div f that we scrape. So that's the first div that's showing up right now. And what we're looking for right now is the title of the item. Now, if you look closely, you notice that the title of the item is right here. It says Crunchy Variety Pack 5 Boxes. And then if you notice, um, the next line is actually the price. Now, what we want to do is we want to find out what the tag is, where the, where the title is located, and whether it has a class or not. So now I've noticed that the, 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 the tag that's being used is H4. And within it, they also have another anchor tag, but we don't want the anchor tag. We will use the h4 tag because that's where our title is. So we can do a dot find because there's only one h4 in here. And we only know, we know that there's only really going to be 
um, one title that we want to scrape. We don't want to scrape multiple titles from one div. From one div, we want only one title. So we're going to do product zero dot find. And then as I said, we're going to find the H4. Run that and you notice that it only returns the H4 from the product zero. So it's only looking at the first div that we scraped in this product list. So in here, we notice that it's also got the anchor tag, which we don't want. We only essentially want the readable text, which is the title, which is why we can use the dot text attributes and then run again to only get the text or human readable text as a string. So now that we've done this once, we can actually repeat this process in a loop. So let's quickly go ahead and write a loop to do just that. So we'll do for product in products, which means product is going to be referring to each item of the product list, which is each div. We're going to do a new variable called product name, and that's going to be equals to product, which is a div in each individual div from the list dot find h4 dot oops dot text. So essentially, we've done the same thing that we did down here, which we just did it once, but now we're going to do it with all the um, all the divs. So if I print product name for each product, we should essentially get. Uh, voila, we essentially get um, all the titles that we scraped from the list. So all the product titles um, from the divs that we had in the products list. So all the titles are here. Perfect. Now we also want to store the price, which is why we need to find out a way to find the price. So the same um, sort of methodology again, we look at the first item in the list and then let's look for the price. So let's see. We found it earlier on. So it's right here below the title. And we notice that it's inside a span tag, which also has a class. So we can use exactly just that to do a find. So remember that the tag we're looking for is a span and the class it has is called regular price. So let's copy the class name and we'll create a new variable. But before that, let's just experiment here. We'll do dot find. So in the first item, we're going to dot find a span because that's the tag. And then we know that the class is actually equal to regular price. Run that and we get exactly the span we're looking for. But we also get the HTML code. We don't want that. So we're going to do dot text to only keep the text out of it. And perfect. We get the text right here. You notice that we have a dollar sign in there, which we don't really want. We only want the raw number. So we'll do something to get rid of the dollar sign in a moment as well. So we're going to do a new variable called product price and then we're assigned we're going to assign that to each product in the products list dot find span where the class is going to be equal to regular plot price. So basically we're just copying and pasting what we did for one product to essentially run for all the products and we're also assigning it to a variable variable called product price. Now, as I said before, it has a dollar sign in it. So we want to get rid of that dollar sign. So I'm going to do product price equals product price dot replace. Now, what do we want to replace? We want to replace a string dollar sign and we want to replace that with essentially nothing. So now if I go ahead and print my product uh, prices, I should get them without the dollar sign. So let's run this. And we get it without the dollar sign, but what we notice is some of the prices have a from text inside them. We don't really want that, so we are also going to replace the from text with nothing. So up here where we did the first replace, we're going to go ahead and do dot replace from with a capital M and then replace that with nothing. We also notice that it might have an additional space leading or trailing, so we're going to do dot strip to get rid of any leading or trailing spaces. So essentially now when I run this, you will notice that it's overwritten the initial product price, got rid of the dollar sign from and any additional spaces, and is only printing the float version or the normal numbers for the price, which is perfect. Now what we are going to do next is essentially save the product name and product price for each product inside a list. Um, and we're going to save it in a dictionary format. So let's create the list where it's going to be saved. So we're going to do product underscore list is equal to an empty list. And the reason why we're not doing it inside the loop is because each time the loop runs, it will make it an empty list and we'll end up with just one product. 
So that's why we initialize it outside the loop and then we're going to write the product price and the product name onto this product uh, list. So we're going to do product underscore list dot append. Now dot append will basically just add the item onto the list at the end. So we're going to do product list dot append and as a dictionary we're going to do name as a key and product name as a value comma to add another key value so I'm going to do price as a key and product price as a value. Now if you guys are not familiar with how dictionaries work or need a quick revision I'll link a tutorial in the description so make sure to go watch that and then you can come back to this. But once we're done with uh, basically appending everything to the list what, what I'm going to do here outside the loop is I'm going to print let's run this first nothing will show up because I'm not printing anything. I'll get rid of this and I'm going to print product list just to show you what it looks like. And here we are. So the product list has dictionaries inside it. Each dictionary has a key and price key and each value for those keys is different because obviously we are going through each item and saving the price and key, uh, name for each item separately. So we essentially have what we need right here. Now the last, last step to this would be taking this list with dictionaries, converting it into a nice pandas table or pandas data frame as they call it, and then saving it as a CSV file. So let's do that. Create a new variable called DF, which stands for data frame. And then we'll assign that to PD, which is pandas. The module we imported at, as PD, import pandas as PD up here. Dot data frame, because that's the method we're going to use. Uh, make sure that DNF is capital. Otherwise, you're going to have errors. The first argument or the only argument we need in here is the list which has all the data that wants to be that we want to convert to a table or a pandas data frame. So, of course, we know it's called a products list. Um, and now what I'm going to do is run this real quick and let's print out DF to see what it looks like. And voila, as I said, it's going to turn out as the data frame is nothing more than basically a nice looking table with columns and rows where the data is organized nicely, right? So we can see that the row zero is crunchy variety pack, five boxes for the price of $24.99. Cool. So now that we have everything nicely inside a data frame, maybe we may want to save this onto a hard drive as a file, right? Maybe like a CSV file so we can reference it in the future. So Pandas allows us to also do that, but because when we convert something to a data frame, we have certain functionalities that are available to us. So we can do df.2 underscore CSV, and that will save whatever is in the data frame as a CSV. So we need to give it a name, let's say tutorial scrape.csv. Um, make sure you add the .csv extension in the end, otherwise the file format won't be recognized by a computer. And then you do dot index is equal to false because otherwise what will end up happening is you will also have a new column in your CSV files with all the index numbers, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to run this cell that saves the file. And then I'm going to look on my computer that says for a file that says tutorial scrapes dot CSV. And it's actually showed up on the right time. So let's open it up. Give it a second and voila. As you see, we have a column called name, column called price. Name has literally all the items on the website and price has all the prices to those items um, linked to it as well. So let's close this file. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, as promised last time, I'm trying to push out at least one video per month. So I hope this tutorial has been useful. You can use the same methodology to scrape sort of other stuff from other websites because most of them have similar structures and you'll be using this technique quite often if you're trying to scra scrape stuff from websites. If you guys would like to see more stuff related to scraping or using pandas please leave that in the comment section. Other than that, other than that please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share because sharing really helps the channel out and guys I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace!